Good morning, family. Good morning to all of our Facebook watchers, all of our uh, virtual congregation. We thank God for you this morning. We thank God for you joining us on this third Sunday of Advent as we celebrate the coming of the Christ child, who is Jesus our Lord. Thank you for joining us in our cyber sanctuary in this virtual worship experience. We're so glad that you chose to join us this morning, that you have decided and you have uh, made yourself available to hear from God today, from his word. So we, th we are thankful and we are grateful that God has brought us to this place that God has allowed us to see another day, that God has blessed us, that he has been so merciful and so kind, so gracious to protect us and to keep us. There is so much that we need to pray for. There's so much that we need to be aware of. The bottom line is God is good and his mercy endures for all generations. So before we go into God's word today, let's go to God in prayer as a family, seeking both his face and his favor over our time in his word. Father God, we thank you. We glorify you. We magnify and glorify your holy name. You are exalted above all things. There is nothing that compares to you. Yes. There is no one who is comparable to you. You mm -hmm. are the preeminent and the transcendent God of all things. And Lord, we worship you this morning in spirit and in truth. Oh Lord, as we come to you this morning, we come to you understanding that our world is in need of prayer. Yes. Our world is in need of healing. Our world is in need of of your divine intervention. Lord, we need your protection. We need your provisions. We need your power and we need your promise. Lord, we need you to show yourself true in this time. Reveal yourself, allow your glory to permeate our lives, unleash your anointing and reveal your love. Lord, we need you desperately in these hours. Father, we pray for all those families who are suffering and struggling. We pray for the families who suffered the loss of life, yes. the loss of income, mm -hmm. the loss of livelihoods, the loss of stability. Lord, there is so much loss, so much hurt, so much pain, so much frustration. Lord, there is so much thing, so many things going on in this world that it is sometimes difficult to see the goodness of God. Yes. But Lord, even now, hmm. even in the darkness of this world, your light still shines. Yes. For you are the light of this world. And Lord, we walk by faith and not by sight. Yes. That Father, we know that without faith, it is impossible to please you. So Lord, we stand today not on what we see, but what we know of yes. our God. Yes. We know that you are a healer. Yes. We know that you are a deliverer. We know that you save, you set free, and yes. that you break bonds. So, Lord, today, we stand on faith, and mm. we stand by faith, yes. that all things will work together yes. for the good to them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. We believe it today. Yes. Lord, we will not allow the dark season to diminish or demean our great God. Yes. So Lord, today, as we run to your word, we run to see how you are even still blessing us now mm -hmm. in the midst of chaos and confusion, in the midst of pandemonium and pandemic. Mm -hmm. You are still God. Yes. And we are still saved. Yes. Because you are Lord. So, Lord, we ask you to bless our time in worship. We ask you to bless our time 
in this season. We ask you to bless our time in your word. Mm -hmm. We ask you to just bless your people today. And may the words that we hear from your word go in and transform our hearts. May lives be saved today. May hearts be transformed. Yes. May minds be regulated. May nerves be calmed. Mm. May you give us the peace that surpasses all understanding. Yes. May you bring some understanding to something in our lives that may have been causing us frustration and confusion. Lord, let us see today how you are still at work even in the season. Yes. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. We love you. Yes. And we magnify your holy name. For it is in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray this. The church said, amen. 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 Turn with me today to the book of Luke, Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2, we are continuing our campaign for Christ uh, for the month of December. We are looking at encounters with the Christ and how these encounters change the lives of people that come into contact with Jesus. Hmm. Our prayer is that we can have these continued encounters with Jesus Christ so that we can have this continued transformation, this sanctification, this building up and strengthening through our connection with Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I'm the vine. If you abide in me and let my word abide in you, that I will continue to keep you. So Luke chapter 2, verse 8, beginning at verse 8, we're going to read this morning an extended passage of scripture that is familiar with many of us. Well, we're going to look at how some shepherds came into contact with Jesus and they were never the same again. Mm. Luke chapter 2, beginning at verse number 8, it says, now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for behold, I will bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For well, there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. This will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven, that the shepherds said to one another, let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. They came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told them. Amen. Thank you for joining us in our reading. I want to tag the text today, Unexpected Encounters. Unexpected Encounters. Have you ever had something unexpected happened to you? That, that's somewhat of a rhetorical question because we have all had something unexpected happen to us. Be it an unexpected blessing or an unexpected tragedy, an unexpected time of joy and celebration or an unexpected time of sorrow and sadness. Unexpected means unforeseen, surprising, unpredictable. It, it is something that you didn't see coming. You, you had no idea that it would happen because you didn't think that it could happen. Huh. But before you know it, 
There it is. In this familiar passage of scripture, we find an unexpected encounter. Luke set the scene of this encounter as a normal night in the fields outside of Bethlehem. Shepherds were watching over their flocks. There was nothing out of the ordinary. There was nothing to indicate that this would be anything but another night of dull sheep watching. <laughs> These shepherds were, were minding their own business when suddenly, out of nowhere, something unexpected happened. Something amazing happened. Something extraordinary interrupted their ordinary. An angel of the Lord invaded their normalcy and, and this angel literally turned their midnight into midday. Huh. This angel delivered the, the unexpected message of good news. The Savior, who is the Christ, the Lord, is born in the city of David. Hmm. The title given to this newborn baby indicated his person and his work. He, he is the Savior of the world. He is the Christ. He is the Messiah. He is the Lord our God. Jesus is the Savior, Messiah, and God all wrapped up into one. All of that is wrapped up in this unexpected message. My brothers and sisters, God is still doing the unexpected. Amen. Just when we think we know God. When we think we've seen all of God and, and when we think we've seen the best of God, God will do something that we never imagined. And I propose that in his unexpectedness, God is still revealing Jesus to the world. Yes. This year has been a testimony of the unexpected. Society has been shut down. We are battling a virus with no cure. Death is at every doorstep. The economy has crashed and even the doors of the physical church have been closed. Yes. All of this was unexpected, but the good news of God is that God uses the unexpected to point us to Jesus Christ. Yes. It, it is in these unexpected encounters that we experience the greatness of God. Huh. This, this, this unexpected encounter for these shepherds turned out to be a blessing for the entire world because this unexpected encounter with God led them to Jesus Christ. Mm. My prayer is that all we have seen, all we have heard, all we have experienced in the unexpected uncertainty of this year draws us closer to Jesus Christ. Yes. All that we've been doing, yes. all that we've heard, all, all that we've felt, all that we've seen, the pain, the, the hurt, the frustration, the upheaval, my prayer is all of the unexpected uncertainty of this year has drawn each and every one of us closer to Jesus Christ. Yes. What can we learn? about God and our unexpected encounters. But first of all, this, this unexpected counter in, encounter in the text teaches us that God initiates the unexpected encounter. Hmm. The unexpected encounters are initiated by God. The text says the shepherds were living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night and behold, suddenly, unexpectedly, out of nowhere, an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them. Shepherds were considered social outcasts in Israel. Mm. Their work rendered them ceremonially unclean and excluded them from temple worship. It is ironic that these shepherds were watching over the sheep that would most likely be used in the sacrifices in the temple, but they themselves were not allowed to worship in the temple. Hmm. They, they were deemed low class, untrustworthy, low down, and no good. 
And yet when God decided huh. to reveal and unveil the birth of his son, he chose people who had been discarded by society. Huh. He didn't come to the palace. He didn't come to lawmakers. Yeah. He didn't seek out the social elite. He didn't even go to the church. No, huh. he went to some no-name shepherds huh. out in the middle of nowhere to tell them that Jesus had been born. Huh. It doesn't matter who you are. Yeah. It doesn't matter yeah. where you are, and it doesn't matter what you are doing. When God wants to find you, he'll find you. Yes, thank you, Lord. He will come to wherever you are and find you, even when other people have forgotten you. Yes. James Stewart says, it was very ordinary people, busy about ordinary tasks, whose eyes first saw the glory of the coming Lord. It means that the place of duty, however humble, is the place of vision. Can I help you here? You don't have to be in some social special place for God to show up. Yes. And all of this, it was God who came to the shepherds. It was not the shepherds who came to God. God always initiates the encounter. Huh. It was God who found Abraham in the Ur of the Chaldeans. It was God who found Moses on the backside of the desert. It was God who found David out watching over his father's sheep. And it was God who found you and me yes. when we were sinking in our own sea. Yes, thank you, Lord. Jesus said, for the Son of Man has come to seek, seek and save that which was lost. This was not just an unexpected encounter for these shepherds. This is a picture of salvation. Uh -huh. These shepherds were deemed unclean by the law. According to the law, they were no good. But in his grace, without their solicitation, God inserted himself into their situation. Uh -huh and chose them despite what the law said about them. Mm. That's the unexpected nature of salvation. It's the unforeseen nature of God's grace. It's the unmerited favor of his mercy. Yeah. God will disregard the letter of the law and pull you and I out of sin in order to save our lives. Yeah. Romans chapter 5 verse 8 said, but God demonstrated his own love toward yes. us and that while we were still sinners, Christ yes. died for us. Wherever you are, God can find you because it's always God who initiates the unexpected encounter. Hmm. This unexpected encounter was initiated by God. But secondly, this unexpected encounter focused on Jesus Christ. The, the angels came to the shepherds not to reveal something about the shepherds, but to reveal something about the Savior. Hmm. The angel said, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you you will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. At the announcement of the birth of Christ, the heavens erupted in a spontaneous supernatural praise break. Huh. William McDonald said, suddenly heavens picked up ecstasy, broke forth, and it was all focused on Jesus Christ. Hmm. This praise wasn't for the shepherds. The praise was for Jesus. Yes. Our unexpected supernatural encounters should always point us to Jesus. Amen. It's not about our breakthrough. Huh. It's not about our anointing or yes. our gifting. It's always about Jesus. Yes. These things 
or a byproduct or an extension or a, 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 a result of our relationship with Jesus, but we are never the focus. In fact, if you have a supernatural encounter and it's all about you, it's probably not from God. Yes, yes. If you get a prophetic word that tells you how great you are, that tells you how gifted you are, that only speaks of your greatness, then it's probably not from God because God always reveals the reality and the greatness and the preeminence of Jesus Christ. Yes. This, this unexpected encounter told the shepherds who they were looking for, where they would find him, and what he would look like. Because the Spirit of God always reveals the reality of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Any encounter with God should inspire us and motivate us to seek after Jesus. Yes, yes. Psalm 119 and two says, blessed are those who keep his testimony, who seek him with the whole heart. Isaiah 55 and six says, seek the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he is near. Matthew 6, 33 says, but seek first the kingdom of God yes. and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Whenever there is an unexpected encounter with God, there should be a spiritual seeking that draws us closer to Jesus Christ. When the angels retreated into heaven, the shepherd said, let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. I wish I had time to unpack that, but but let me just suffice to say, if you want to come see Jesus, you can come to Bethlehem. Huh. Can, can you imagine, though? Yeah, 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 if you want to see Jesus come to Bethlehem. But can you imagine the shepherds seeing the angels but not seeking Jesus? Hmm. Can you imagine them seeing the manifestation of God's glory and not seeking the object of glory? Can you imagine the shepherds getting this, this unexpected encounter and receiving this announcement and then just staying in the field? Uh -huh. We can imagine it because many of us are guilty of it. Yes, we yes. praise God for his glory. We testify of what we've seen Lord, from yes. God, but we won't take one step uh -huh. Toward what he has revealed to us. We say with God, all things are possible. I can do all things through Christ, uh, through Christ who strengthened me, that I can do all. But we haven't done one thing to verify what we say we believe. And after all that God has shown us, we're still no closer to Jesus. Uh. <laughs> Lord help me. We're still in the field after all we've seen and heard from God. We haven't made one step to get closer to Jesus. God has revealed the vision. He has given us the manifestation. He has shown us the glory. And we haven't done one thing to get closer to Jesus. But I declare to you today that every unexpected super encounter, supernatural encounter we have with the divine should draw us closer to the deliverer. Hmm. Unexpected encounters are initiated by God. They focus on Jesus Christ. But finally, unexpected encounters are evangelistic in nature. Mm. The shepherds left the fields in search of the Savior, and they found him in Bethlehem. Y'all going to get that in a minute. Mm -hmm. Bethlehem means house of bread, which means when they got to the house of bread, what they found was the bread of life. Huh. But that was not the end of the story because verse 17 says, now when they had seen him, when they had visual confirmation of God's revelation, they made widely known the sayings which was told them concerning the Christ. When they saw Jesus, they started talking to people 
about the Jesus that they saw. Y'all mm. are hearing me. When, when they saw Jesus, when they got the visible, visual confirmation of what God revealed to them, they couldn't keep it to themselves. Mm. They told everybody around what God told them about the baby that was laying in the manger. Yes. But remember, they didn't start talking about themselves. Hmm. They didn't talk about themselves being special because God had a word for them. They didn't talk about themselves yes. being special because God revealed himself to them. Yes. They told everybody else what God said about Jesus. Yes. They told them that there's more than this baby than meets the eye. Huh. This is the Savior. This is the long-awaited Messiah. This is the Lamb of God. This is the answer to our prayers. This is the King of kings and Lord of lords. And it may not look like it now, but time will reveal. Mm. This is the response and responsibility of everyone who has an encounter with Jesus. Jesus Christ has revealed himself to us so that we can tell somebody else about him. Yes. Here's the amazing part. Remember, in this society, shepherds were considered untrustworthy and they were considered unreliable. They were considered so untrustworthy that they were not even allowed to testify in court. Their word was so uh, non-credible that they couldn't even provide eyewitness testimony in a court of law. But they, these are the very people that God used to tell other people about Jesus Christ. Hmm. Listen, they couldn't testify in human court, but God used them to testify about Jesus. They couldn't testify in human court, but God let them testify about the heavenly court. Mm. God will use you to tell somebody else about Jesus when nobody else will believe you. But watch what happened. And I'm done. The shepherds had an unexpected encounter that revealed the birth of Jesus Christ. They were diligent to go and seek him. And when they found him, they were obedient to tell others what God revealed to them about him. But then verse 20 says, the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all things they had heard and seen as it was told to them. Your encounter with Jesus won't mean anything to anybody else huh. <laughs> until it means everything to you. Yes. If your encounter with Jesus doesn't have an effect on you, it probably won't have an effect on the people around you. Yes. When the shepherds saw Jesus, they went back to the same field they came from, but they were not the same. Hmm. They didn't say, we saw Jesus, I'm gonna quit my job. They didn't say, I'm gonna see, I saw Jesus, I don't have to do that anymore. That's beneath me, no, no. They said, we saw Jesus and God didn't tell us to change our profession or our vocation, but he did tell us to change our revelation. Mm. An encounter with Jesus may not change your social status. Mm. It may not change your financial standing. It may not change where you live or where you work, but an encounter with Jesus ought to change you. Yes. They went back to the same fields with a new praise. Hmm. They didn't need the angels this time, though. No, they didn't, they didn't need a heavenly host. They didn't yes. need no praise team. They didn't need a worship leader. They didn't need a choir. They didn't need musicians. Yes. All they needed was what they saw of Jesus. Huh. This unexpected encounter with Jesus was enough to give them a personal prayer. Mm. That should be enough for you and me. When we see Jesus, we should have yes. our own praise yes. because of our encounter with Jesus. Yes. If you have had an unexpected encounter with Jesus, you should have your own personal praise 
It should take a whole lot of folks to get you excited about Jesus. Huh. It shouldn't take a room full of people to get you excited yeah. about Jesus. Yeah. When I think about Jesus huh. and all that he's done for me, yes, my yes. soul cries yeah. hallelujah. It doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't huh. matter what you think about me. It doesn't matter what you think about my situation. Yeah. But when I know for myself that I have come into contact huh. with Jesus, yeah. when I know that I've had an encounter with Jesus, when I know this morning I spent time with the Lord, yeah. when I know this morning that he spoke into my spirit, when I know it was him who laid me down last night and got me up this morning, when I think of his goodness toward me, when I think that I'm coming to the end of 2020, and out of all the folks who left here, God still left me here. Yeah. When I think of his goodness, my soul cries hallelujah. Yeah. I don't need a praise party. I can have a praise party all by myself. Yes. These shepherds went back to the fields praising God, huh. thanking him for this unexpected encounter. When was the last time you thanked God for an unexpected encounter? Mm. When was the last time you can say you had, you sincerely had an encounter with the Lord? Perhaps we've lost our witness. Mm. Perhaps we've lost our praise because we haven't had an encounter with Jesus. Perhaps some of you are looking at me today and you don't know this feeling because you've never had a real encounter with Jesus. Perhaps some of you may be looking at me and you, you can say, Pastor, I remember that feeling, but I don't feel it now because I can't remember my last sincere encounter with Jesus. Today is your day to have an encounter with Jesus. But I want to warn you, you can't have a real encounter with Jesus and stay the same. Mm. So I want to invite you all, saved and unsaved, to have an encounter with Jesus. But Pastor, how do I do that? You just open yourself and open your heart and avail yourself and say, Lord, let your will be done in my life. Yes. Not my will, but your will. Avail yourself to pray. Avail yourself to study God's word. Avail yourself to sit somewhere quietly, turning off all your things and just saying, Lord, speak to me. Hmm. You make yourself available to God. God makes himself available to you. If today you've accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, you can contact us, reach out to us, give us a message, shoot us a message, contact us through whatever means you can to let us know you've accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior so that we can minister and disciple and serve you as a new part of our family. If today you say, look, Pastor, I, I had that, but I lost it. Today is your day to reconnect with God. Mm -hmm. You don't lose your salvation. But we can lose fellowship through our own disconnection, through our own complacency, through our own busyness. We can lose that fellowship with God. Today, you can get that fellowship back. You can be like these shepherds who saw Jesus and were changed forever, went back praising, thanking God, saying, thank you for allowing me to reconnect with you. Mm -hmm. Today is your day for that. Don't leave this worship experience the same way that you came. God brought you to this place, this time in worship to let you know that, hey, we, this is my unexpected encounter with you. You can leave this place different than when you came. Thank you for joining us today. Just a few things. We are gathering items for our uh, Christmas basket. We're going to bless uh, we're going to bless 25 families for Christmas to make sure that they have a meal uh, on Christmas Day or the subsequent days around the Christmas holiday. Uh, we'll be distributing those uh, items on the uh, 21st of December. So contact one of our deacons if you want to contribute. Contact Deacon Terrell McCants if you have names for the baskets. We still need people 
to give the baskets to. If you have a family that needs a basket, contact Dick and Terrell McCants so we can get those names in. Also, we're taking up Walmart gift cards for our Angel Tree kids. Every year we participate in the Angel Tree ministry, providing gifts for our uh, for kids of those who are incarcerated. Sister Donna Craigshan leads up our Angel Tree effort every year. We are accepting uh, $20 gift cards from Walmart, $20 gift cards from Walmart. If you want to go to Walmart, purchase that $20 gift card, get it to the church. We'll make ourselves available to receive that. If you just want to bring us the $20 or give us the $20 on Giveify, we'll make sure that those cards are bought for those young people. Amen? Amen. Listen, uh, we know that there's a lot of people hurting. There's a lot of people struggling. Uh, there are a lot of people who are sick. There are a lot of people who are recovering. There are a lot of people who are still ill. We are praying mightily yes. for all of our families. Yes. We're praying for the Lindley family. We're yes. praying for the Hamilton family. Yes. We are praying for the Haskin family. We're yes. praying for the AC family. Yes. We are lifting all of our families up in prayer who in this season uh, who are having e an even more difficult time uh, with all the things that are going on. So we're asking, continue to pray. Continue to lift up God. Continue to allow God to move in our lives. Amen. Amen. So we thank God for you. There will be some more announcements coming uh, as our church moves forward into the new year. Uh, some more things will be coming out. Pastor, we'll get that word to you. Thank you for all of you joining us today on our broadcast. We're going to pray, and then we're going to let you go. Amen. God, we thank you yes, Lord. for your word. Yes. And we thank you, Lord, for unexpected encounters. Mm. If it were not for these unexpected encounters, none of us would be saved. Yes. None of us would be redeemed. Uh, none of us would have eternal life. So we thank you for the unexpected encounter of salvation. We thank you that Jesus Christ died on the cross, mm. that he rose again, that he sits eternally to intervene for, our, for your people. And that one day he is coming back yes. to redeem his church and to take us to where he is. That's a promise we have from him. And Father, we believe that promise today from Jesus Christ. So Lord, we thank you that even now in this difficult season, we still have the glory of Jesus Christ. Yes. We have the presence of the Holy Spirit. We have the protection of the Father. So Father, we pray that your will be done in the life of all of our people. We pray that your will be done in the life of our families, mm -hmm. that you will heal that you will deliver, and that you will set free. But most of all, we pray that you will save souls, transform lives, and change hearts. Yes. Father, now as we leave this place, but never from your presence, may the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth, now and forevermore. Let every heart say amen. God amen. bless you. God keep you is our prayer.